How's it going, Rogues Gallery, and welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today we are talking about the recent surprise out of print announcement for Welcome to Wraith. Anyone who watches this channel knows that this is something that I've been expecting for a while now, basically ever since we saw the Crucible of War out of print announcement. This is something that I've been saying is going to be coming, and here it is. While the out of print announcement itself isn't exactly surprising, what they're doing with it, or afterwards, or alongside it, or however you want to spin this, I think is interesting, and it's really cool, and it's something that I personally want to take part in. So that is going to be the main focus of the video today, talking about this really, really cool celebration event, as well as what I think they might do in the future for reprints, because now that we have all of the three first sets out of print, I think we are now kind of poised to start talking about reprints in a bigger capacity, right? A lot of people talk about reprints and they're like, hey, it'd be cool if we got Command & Conquer reprinted, or cool if we got, you know, whatever reprinted, you know, insert expensive card here. But I want to talk about reprints on a larger scale because at some point we're going to need more than just Command & Conquer and Enlightened Strike reprinted, right? We're going to need all of these staple cards that are, you know, 50 cents or whatever right now that are going to be hard to get in like three or four years. We're going to need those reprinted. And so let's talk about that as well in today's video. But before we get started, I do want to mention a brand new partnership with Red Zone Rogue, one that I am absolutely, absolutely stoked to um, be a part of and, and to partnership with. And that, of course, is Dragon Shield. Dragon Shield actually reached out to me directly after I made a video, you know, reviewing their custom sleeves. And they were like, hey, we like your stuff. Would you like to partner with us? And I was like, Dude, Dragon Shield, in my opinion, they're the best sleeves on the market, of course. <laughs> of course I would like to, because it's what I already buy, right? It'd be a different story if, um, I don't know, some, someone else like Legion or whatever reached out to me, which are fine, they're, they're fine sleeves, but I don't personally use them. But Dragon Shield is perfect. I literally use these sleeves. These are the sleeves I have for my custom Red Zone Rogue sleeves. Dra it's just a perfect thing. So with all that said, we're going to see some Dragon Shield stuff. I'm going to do some reviews. Um, give you my honest 100% opinions because I don't think all of their products are 100% perfect, but I do really like them. Um, and also I have an affiliate link with them now, so if you want to pick up some Dragon Shield stuff, it'll go and support me. I do have a link in the description, so that's pretty sweet. And um, yeah, so partnership with Dragon Shield. I'm pretty stoked with that. All right, so let's start talking about Welcome to Wraith, an absolutely landmark set in the trading card game industry. The first Flesh and Blood set, the, the set that kicked it all off. And I still have, it's only last year, still have so fond memories, so many fond memories of diving into Flesh and Blood, starting with Welcome to Wraith, because Arcane Rising wasn't even out yet. And you can still go back and watch my first opinions and my first impressions of Flesh and Blood on this channel. Like, it's, it's crazy. So like, what happened basically, long story short, is I reached out to Legend Story Studios, I saw the game, and I was like, hey, this is really, really cool. It's impossible for me to get because it was actually impossible at the time. Um, they didn't even have any distributors or anything. It was like, it was like, it was a nightmare. But I was like, hey, I, I love your, I love the way your game looks. I would love to try it. And they were like, yeah, here you go. And then they sent me like a booster box and all of the, the hero decks, which are still back here, including the booster box. Um, it, they're all opened, of course, because I opened up and played with them. But I immediately fell in love with the game, and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with it because of Welcome to Wraith. I even opened up a foil Enlightened Strike in my very first booster box. Spoilers for that booster box opening. But um, it means a lot. That like that set means a lot. Just you know, to me as a content creator and to like the card game industry, it's just such a landmark set. So seeing it go out of print is a little bit bittersweet, but it's something I've been saying for a while. It's bound to happen and now it's happening. Um, once again, we'll talk later about reprints. I think there's a good chance to see a lot of this stuff later, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a little bittersweet. So as of um, the filming of this video, Welcome to Wraith is officially out of print, but they're gonna do a really cool event that I alluded to. And so if you haven't read the Flesh and Blood, you know, Legend Story Studios post about this, I think you should for more details. I actually have it right here because I don't have it all memorized, especially the dates but it's super cool. Basically, they're gonna be throwing a farewell to Wraith 
event um, just to kind of like send off the flagship set. And I think that's so cool. And they're gonna have really awesome prizes, including um, basically previously impossible to get cold foil young heroes of the, the, the four heroes that were in Welcome to Wraith. So this is gonna happen in stores around the world, January 28th to the 30th. Um, due to the Lunar New Year Feral to Welcome to Wraith events in Southeast Asia will run January 21st to the 23rd. So we get a little bit early, but it's gonna be awesome. There's gonna be um, Bravo, Dorinthia, Ryan Har, and Katsu, Cold Foil, Young Heroes. It says available for the first time in Cold Foil. I thought you could get them before, but not, I thought they were like really hard to get and they, I remember a couple kind of like floating around and they were very expensive when I first got into the game. I don't know how people got those. Maybe they just got them straight from Legend Story Studios or if um, they were given to people or, or whatever, but uh, this is the first time you can get them like at an event, which is awesome. And they're really cool. <laughs> they're just really cool. I definitely want a uh, Cold Foil Young Dorinthia. She's my favorite hero from that set. One of the first heroes that I learned how to play. And so that would be awesome. I really, really want a Cold Foil Dorinthia. So these Cold Foil promos are strictly limited to 16 per event, one event per store. So every store will only get 16 of these, which is pretty scarce. Um, and that's not like 16 of each. It just says 16 per event. So I would guess four each. Oh man, that's, that's a little rough. So these are gonna be pretty rare and probably pretty valuable. Um, and then it gives you like a um, lowdown on how to do it if you're a store or whatever. Um, it says the recommended event structure is, um, is a one event with a player cap of 16 players. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that everyone just gets something. That's awesome. With the event running as follows. Two eight player draft pods. Yo, I love draft and welcome to Wraith draft is a lot of fun. Then play three rounds of Swiss within your pod. Two eight eight player draft pods potted based on standings after round three, then play three rounds of Swiss. Prizes awarded based on standings after six rounds of Swiss. So if you have 16, if you have 16 players and 16 promos, every player gets a promo. That would be sweet. Um, yeah, that, that'd be really sweet. Uh, I think, I don't know how you would do it other than that, but I think this event's awesome and I'm definitely going to try to make it to some of my local events. I'm gonna try to go to the Discs and Dice and maybe go in gaming locally. I encourage you to go to some of your local stores and see if they're having these events. It seems like a ton of fun, like an absolute ton of fun. And I think Welcome to Wraith is an absolute blast to play, especially in Limited. Reinar, Brute is really good. I suck with Reinar, but I'm pretty good with him in Limited. Turns out just smashing really hard is pretty good. And Romping Club is just a good weapon. I almost forgot to mention that they are giving away some Welcome to Wraith Alpha, which is very, very interesting. It says they have some locked away in the cupboard for a special occasion. The case will be given away to a mix of players and stores who participate in a farewell Welcome to Wraith event as follows. One display to a player chosen at random from the USA slash Canada, one to one from Europe or UK, one to one from Southeast Asia or Oceania, and one display to a store chosen at random who schedules their uh, Welcome to Wraith event by January 20th. So that's sweet. You can win some random uh, alpha welcome to Wraith. I have no idea how they're gonna choose what store gets it or, or whatever. Maybe it's just literally a dice roll, but yeah, that's cool. That's that. Let's talk about some of the reprints, right? Because it's something that comes up a lot on the channel every time I talk about these. And I don't really go into card pricing and stuff because frankly, it's not like my focus. I don't focus on like finance and you know pricing and all that kind of stuff, but I understand that these things are going to get even more expensive. So the expensive cards are gonna just get more expensive and harder to get over time. And Legend Story Studios needs to remedy that, right? Um, it's just something that needs to happen. They need to fix that and then print more stuff. And I think personally, the way to do it, there's, there's two ways you can do it and you can kind of do both at the same time too, is to kind of drip the reprints in various sets. So like, you know, we got the Tunic in Crucible of War, we have the Arcanite Skullcap in Everfest. Um, and they can probably just drip feed some over time, but I don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough because we're gonna need more than just the big heavy hitters, more than just the legendaries. At some point, you're gonna need to get like your basic stuff. You're gonna need to get like your 
scar for a scar, right? Like at some point these cards are just gonna be very hard to get. Even though the unlimited print run was decent enough, you know, in four or five years, it's gonna be hard to get. So they need to make more frequent reprints or what I think they're actually gonna do, and this was uh, something that they talked about, James White talked about this in an interview with Team Covenant. He said that the idea of like a reprint set or a core set is something that they have considered. And I think that's really what they're going to do. They're just going to have a big, big old reprint set where it's just like 100% reprints. And I think that's the way to do it. Like every other year, every year or so, just in a way that doesn't flood the market and make the cards worthless, but every so often have a reprint set. And you can call it, and this is something I've mentioned many times in videos before, call it something like World of Wraith Volume 1. And it just has all of the reprints from the year one, year one, like the first three sets or whatever, of Flesh and Blood. So it's got like Command and Conquer and E-Strike and all of the key legendaries. And it's got like, you know, your, your staple commons like Sink Below and um, Scar for a Scar and the Sigils and all, all that kind of stuff. It, it has a Plunder Run, you know, all, all of the, the good playable stuff. And it's just all in one big set and then they can make it um, for draft. I don't think it needs to be made for limited. It needs to be more about the reprints but they could make it for limited, right? And make it like really fun, almost like a cube, right? Oh, that'd be so, that'd be so cool. Um, but they just need, this is just something that needs to happen eventually. I don't know how they're gonna end up doing it. Um, this is the way I think would be a good, I don't wanna say compromise, but a good way to do it. Um, just to have like a big flashy set, World of Wraith volume one. And then they come out later, you know, years later or whatever, World of Wraith volume two. And they don't always have to be like, you know, these three sets and these three sets, they, don't, they can just be like a smattering of reprints that need to be printed um, in, in a very smart way. But um, yeah, that, that's that's what I think needs to happen. And uh, that's what I really hope happens. And uh, yeah, what I don't want to happen, I don't want to see secret layer type crap, um, unless it's rare or really cool. So like, Unless there's like really cool like alt art or something like that. That's that's how I don't want the reprints to be printed in like secret layer kind of stuff. I'd like to see just all in a big set. But the you know occasional secret layer type thing, if it's really cool or like if it's um, super infrequent, like maybe once a year or less than that, could be really, really cool. So that's, those are my hopes. Those are my hopes for reprints. Here at Red Zone Rogue, we are for the players. I um, recognize and respect the collectors and investors. I am a, somewhat of a collector myself um, because I just buy all the cards and I wanna play with the cards, so I just end up with a lot of the cards. Um, but I really think getting the reprints for the players is super, super important because as we progress over time, there's just gonna be more and more players. And the number of players is greatly gonna outweigh the collectors and the investors. I mean, it probably already does, but it's gonna be even more so in like two or three years. There's gonna be more casual players and there's gonna be more just competitive players in general. So that needs to be a, a focus, right? Um, and I'm not saying I want the cards to be worthless, um, which is funny because people like, uh, some some people have like uh, been like, oh, you're just a investor. I'm like, bro, do you even, <laughs> do you even watch the channel? But um, I don't want the cards to be worthless, but I want people to be able to get them at reasonable prices. Um, like cards that are like over a hundred bucks per card and you need three of them in your deck, that's too much. Like, like honestly, that's too much. I, I don't, I understand that decks need to be worth a certain value and I don't want decks to be worthless, but there's a fine line, right? And I think like over a hundred bucks a card is, is too much. Um, so yes. Reprints, I hope they happen. I hope they happen in a big way. And I hope that it's, it's in a way that's available too. I hope it's not like a limited master's release kind of thing where it's like really expensive and hard to get. No, 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 no. I hope it's just like, here you go. It's just like a regular set. There's a bunch of packs, buy whatever you want. Like that's my hope. And um, yeah, that's that's our discussion of for today. Uh, welcome to Wraith out of print. But I think, you know, I think they, well, I hope they are planning ahead for this kind of stuff and they, they have a game plan and they're ready to put some reprints somewhere. Um, a lot of people are thinking the Everfest. I don't think they're going to be an Everfest <laughs> as much as it would be cool to have like a, a sweet alt art command and conquer in Everfest. I don't think they're going to do it, but um, they could. I've been wrong before, so they could. 
Um, I think it's more likely they're going to put it in like a main corset kind of thing. Anyway, that's that for today. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time for some more card game content. Have a good one. See you later.